In this video, I will show you how to use a static analyzer for C and C++ called CppCheck. As an example, I will run it from the command line on a simple C file and show you how you can customize it to suppress specific errors. Finally, I will add it as a rule to my make file to allow me to simply write make CppCheck to analyze all of the files in my project. If you haven't heard about static analysis before, a static analyzer is essentially a program that helps you find additional bugs in your code that your compiler doesn't catch. There are many static analyzers available today, both free and paid, and they are good at catching different types of errors. For this project, However, I will only be using CPP check just to keep things simple, but you may consider using them in combination to catch even more errors. So let's start by installing CPP check by running sudo apt install CPP check since CPP check is available in the standard repository of Ubuntu. Next, let's create a C file with an error that CPP check can catch. Let's just remove some of the things in this file and then create an array of size 5, for example and initialize it with zero. And then we can make an out of bound access which CPP check should detect. And then running CPP check on main.c, you see that it takes the error as expected. Let's jump back into the file and add a function. So for example, we can add a function that sums two numbers. And let's also fix the error that we just uh, introduced. So with the current state, we have a function that's not used and we may want CPP check to catch that kind of error. So if we simply run CPP check again, it's not going to find that error, but we can add some options to CPP check to make it detect more errors. So the first one I'm going to add is dash dash quiet, which makes CPP check only output something if in case there is an error. And then I'm going to add a flag that enables all of the errors. And I'm also going to add an additional flag to make CPP check return an error code instead of returning zero as it does by default. And now if we run this on main C again, we should detect the unused function. And we do. Now let's say we want to make an exception for this particular function. There's a couple of ways we can do this. First, we could add another flag called suppress. And then we could make an exception for this particular file. So if we, for example, just want to suppress the unused function error for this file, we could write unused function and then give the file name. So it would be something like this. And if we want to narrow it even further, we could give the line number. So if I would use two, it would still find it. And if you instead want to ignore all of the errors in this file, you could use the asterisk symbol. Another way to ignore errors is to use an inline comment. And then you can write cpp check suppress unused function. And then you also have to add another flag to your command inline suppress. So that also works. I can also mention that if you have several files you would like to run CPP check at the same time, you could add them individually like this. But you can also add a folder and CPP check will search that folder recursively. And if you also wanted to find header files, you can use the dash capitalize I flag and then your include directory. To avoid having to deal with this long command on the command line, I'm going to add this to my make file instead. If you haven't seen a make file before, you can check out my previous video where I set this up. So let's just go to the bottom and add a new phony target. And I'm adding this as a phony target since this is not going to produce any output. And then we can add a variable for the CPP check command. Check. And then we can run it as follows. Uh, oh, and let's just add an at sign to avoid printing this command. And then we can add options as before. So it's quiet enable and the error exit code as well as inline suppress and then I can add the include files which I already have a variable for as well as all of the C files which I also have a variable for and then also add it to this phony list. With this rule in place instead of the long command as before I can now run make cpp check instead. Now CPP check is giving me a bunch of errors here in the external project that I'm relying on and I don't want to make any changes in this project so instead I'm just going to ignore this project and I can do this by adding another flag dash i and then add a directory that I want to ignore like this and now if I run make CPP check again there are no errors. Let's also commit these changes to git. Okay, so this was just a short video on CPP check. In my next video, I will make this part of a smaller CI system that I'm going to set up using GitHub Actions. So see you in the next video.